Oh, brother, what is this? Fruit basket upset. We just, we just had this uh, bed delivered and we had it installed, but I had to take it all apart. Why did I have to do that? Well, I wanted to slide it over because I need to cut a cut-in box into the wall there for the coaxial cable for the cable TV. We could not get any of the existing cables in the condo to time out and, and test out properly. The cable guy was here for about three and a half hours the other day. And so we came up with a plan. Uh, somebody must have nailed um, the coaxial cable or stapled it or screwed onto it or cut it off when they were doing some demolition when they were doing some remodeling or something like that we cannot get this cable to work at all these cables are something that goes up on the roof for an antenna dish and we don't want the dish we want the cable that comes in from the street and that's what we're gonna do so he gave me all this cable and so today it's my job to fish it down the wall and down into the garage and everything and that and that's what I'm getting ready to do and see they don't make beds like they used to I mean this stuff is like particle board press board stuff and um, the same thing with the uh, with the headboard and once you start trying to drag that on the carpet I mean it's just almost impossible without ripping it apart and once and once you set it down it insets into your carpet so you're trying to drag it and you're trying to drag it over all your other carpet especially you know on the headboard the headboard see it dug it dug itself a hole in here already so I thought hey fooey on that let's just go ahead and move the bed take it all apart it, it come it goes back together okay and um, I'm getting ready to cut my hole now see uh, how did I how did I even figure out where the hole was gonna go well this this bedroom up here is the guest bedroom it cantilevers over the garage and I measured that and that was like 30 30 inches or so to, to here over to where the garage wall starts and then it was another nine and a half inches to the inside of the wall of the garage where the garage door was so I figured that all out and I had to measure over six inches then I measured six inches from there over uh, to the 31 to this edge and then nine and a half over to that edge so that I could then take my tape measure and measure over from there to there take my tape measure over from there to there so this is the edge the inside corner of where the garage is then I had to knock on the wall and stuff and locate where the studs were and you know if you have a stud finder where is that little where is that little stud finder? I, I had it here. I'm not sure what happened to it. I don't really like using stud finders. Um, I mean, this one wasn't really working that well. I, I, I'm not even sure what I did with it. I think I might have, I think I might have taken it downstairs. Um, but anyways, you can, you can get a, a stud finder or what I like to do is just knock on the wall. And usually where you have an electrical outlet, that electrical outlet is going to be in a plastic junction box and it's going to be nailed on the side of a stud. So it, the stud's either going to be here or here. And when you knock on the wall, when you knock on the wall, right there is where the stud is. Hollow, stud. Here's the other stud, right there. They put both of those on the inside and then I, I also tapped on there, tapped there and I just put a piece of masking tape on there just for right now and there's a big old beam inside the wall there because when I'm tapping from right there to there it's hard I can tell and so I knew it wasn't going to be there so when I went into the garage let's go down into the garage just for a second okay so but um, this edge just happens to be 
where there's a stud up here. So these studs are 16 inches apart. This is this is hollow. Hear that? Stud. Hollow. Stud. Hollow. Okay. And so that's uh, 16 inches. And then uh, 32 is over to there. That's a hollow cavity, hollow cavity. And I've, I'm trying to get into the middle of the cavity in case I'm off by a couple inches one way or another. So when I went down into the garage, let's just go down there for a second. I was going to show you this after I cut the hole, but I thought, ah, I'll just show it to you now. Here's, 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 a, stud, here's a stud finder, okay? And, um, you know, it comes with directions and stuff. And, and this is a little chintzy one. Eh, but it's from Craftsman. It's like five bucks. That's all it costs. So you can find you can find studs that way, and you find all kinds of things in the wall too that you think might be a stud. It's not a stud. So, okay. So the inside of the of the garage. See the outside of the garage wall is 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 up there. See that was like nine and a half inches to the inside of this wall so so then I then I measured over and I started knocking on the knocking down here these studs down here aren't necessarily uh, in the same measurements as above they could be close I mean I don't know how they built this this is a tenant separation wall from a condo and um, uh, I I knocked and I could kind of tell the stud is either here between here and here and then I know this is a hollow cavity up to there see and then this is where that beam this is where that beam was see it it feels oh from here over from there over but then there's a there's a stud now see how it's hollow right in there and so I wanted to take from about the middle, the middle of that. Let's just see. I think it, I think it was about the same as up above. Okay. And we'll take our tape measure from there. And the hollow, really hollow was around 22 inches. And um, then the stud was off to the right and left. I try to get into the middle of the hollow area in case I'm off. A couple inches I don't want to cut it too close to a stud and then find out oh shoot it's on the other side of the stud I mean worst case scenario if I cut a, uh, a cut in box in here um, and if it's not there I put a blank plate on and go in over to the other the next bay but uh, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna be about here and I'm thinking because of these rails here I mean I could put the box here and then run the uh, Quaxle cable back up high along the, the side there and see that's where the cable box comes in from the from the street okay and uh, we know we've got a good connection at the street and all the other cable wires are no good there's I mean the guy racked his brain and um, he could not locate one single solitary good cable in this condo nowhere no how Okay, so that's why, that's why he gave me all that wire, that cable. Eventually, it's going to come out of here, and it's going to go up the wall, across, up, across, and then down into my cut-in box, and then up inside the wall, up into my other cut-in box. You see, and and see, like I say, from here, I'm thinking, instead of cutting the cut-in box right here, I think I can get it up here because it feels hollow I don't think see I don't think there's a top plate there because uh, that's not the ceiling that's not the ceiling right there the ceiling is actually this up here they just built that little soffit see how it's kind of lowered down and that way they had something to attach the garage door frame to and um, uh, let's see over here they ran this and they attached it to there that so I'm not sure what else they would have used that for now that soffit 
you know what that could have that could be a, a raceway with electrical uh, wires in it it could be for water pipes it could be there could be uh, air conditioning duct in there I don't think there is but um, it could be a chase and then they just thought okay we need to do that and cause see over here it's actually bigger isn't it and so there's a reason why they did that I'm not sure exactly why but anyways I think I can put the cut-in box up high above that top rail okay so now we go back inside yeah I'm hoping I don't hit anything major inside the walls usually, usually everything's fine you just have to kind of look at things and go slow hold your breath a little bit be ready for anything you know and I'm gonna run that a continuous cable see I don't have to have uh, the cable in coming out of the wall right there uh, it's just gonna come out of the wall and then I'm gonna have it go down on the on the floor because see I wanted it I wanted it actually behind the bed too so when it comes out you don't really see that cable because it's gonna actually come out of this cover plate okay with the round hole so I'm gonna have it come down at an angle and then I can I can put white caulking around it and then I'm gonna fish it down along the baseboard and and scoot it underneath the baseboard in between the baseboard and the uh, the carpet tack strip uh, there's a little channel in there kaboom 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 and then have it come out over in here somewhere and that's where we're gonna have it come out and then the uh, the cable guy he'll put a splitter on there and then he'll have another wire coming out of there to hook to hook up to the TV because we're gonna have a TV in here with with the uh, uh, cable box and then all the other TVs in the condo uh, will be plugged in to just an electrical outlet and they'll stream off to this cable box okay so we don't, we only need one cable coming in and, and be terminated and that same cable will run the um, the internet for Momi's computer and that kind of stuff and they're gonna bring the modem or something or whatever and then connect on to her Netgear deal and the phone and the printer and all that kind of stuff she's not sure exactly we, we've got to set this room up strategically because it's a little condo hey we we only have so much room so we're hoping to get a small desk here where we can have a TV here the computer here the printer here on the desk or down next to the desk over here in the corner or something like that or maybe she'll end up having the computer over there or maybe we'll have the TV here so people in in the bed instead of looking straight for the TV they're gonna have to kinda look off to the side but I don't think I don't think so I think it's I think the TV is gonna go there it makes much more sense to do that to put the TV there okay and there's a closet here and we were talking toying with the idea hey if it works out or if it doesn't work out here and if the beds in the way um, of, and not having enough clearance here maybe mommy will will put a little desk in the closet and then she can have her computer in the closet so we we don't know about that but when the when the when the uh, cable guy comes when he splits off I'm gonna have him give us one wire long enough for if we're gonna have the TV here or over here so he'll give us a cord maybe you know six seven eight feet long and then I can roll it up wherever it, wherever it ends up going and then for the computer um, I want the cord long enough to go off of a splitter here so if we do decide to put it in the corner of the closet I've got to have a, a cord long enough to get over there maybe 15 20 feet and so uh, I'll have him make me a, a jumper that's maybe 20 feet long I'll measure it out or something and then if she ends up having it here we just have this piece you know 20 feet long and I'll just have to wrap it up and then we'll set it in the corner or, be, or underneath the desk you know whatever and then have it come out so that way that way we're prepared for wherever she decides to have the computer because if the TV goes here the computer is probably gonna have to go at an angle there or 
right here and I'm, I'm thinking it's going to go right here so that cord it if we terminate the cord right in here let's say uh, we'll need a you know a seven or eight foot long uh, pigtail uh, for the for the computer and maybe a 18 20 foot long one for wherever we decide you know later on if the computer needs to be pushed over there or wherever so one one cable is going to be for the TV one cable is going to be for the computer okay so I'm, I'm getting this all set up and I just put the masking tape down here for my own benefit and stuff and see 22 uh, from this edge over is right in here and this is this is hollow you know from this point over so I feel very confident that if I cut that hole out and if I take my flexi bit and fish it down there and drill a hole through the through the floor through the bottom plate I'll go down in that cavity area where if, if I cut that other hole I should be within the same bay of the one down below you see and I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this flexi bit system and um, in fact it came it came with these two this was an extra one in case I ever needed it and it's got a little extension piece on it in case you're ever drilling fr from here and you want to fish your wire all the way up and you don't want to drill it from your uh, attic and there's an attic space up there you can fish your 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 um, flexi bits all the way up there and you may have to take some small ones to, to fit it up in there or push a long one up there and kind of bend it. See, they, they bend a little bit. So that's why they call them flexi, that's why I call them flexi bits. And um, then you can push that, you can push that up and then you can connect another one and connect another one if you want. Well, I bought this one separate. I don't know if I'll ever use it. Okay. And then it, see, it came, it came with this, it came with this right here. Um, these two pieces came with this connection piece and uh, this is the drill bit this is the drill bit here flexible quick connect extension kit this one's from South Wire and um, you know I, I ended up pushing it pushing it together oh here we go see here's the bit and um, this is three quarter inch. You can get them half inch, uh, three eighths. I'm not sure if you can get half, maybe five eighths. But if you get three quarter, you can't just get another bit later and think, oh, I, I need a one inch hole or an inch and a half hole or an inch and a quarter hole and get a twist drill bit and, and hook it on here. These are not designed um, for anything uh, bigger than three quarter inch because you could twist this off or this thing could bend and it's not strong enough okay but these are designed to be used with the three quarter inch and uh, if I had a three eighths inch little twist drill bit I could use that too and see there's a it's just a quick connect at the end and um, I'm, I'm not going to use this short one because I can't get enough bend on it so I'm, more than likely I'm going to use this one here see see how I, I can I can I can flex that see and and so I'll pull that back and see if I can't get that on there Ooh, see I gotta check it make sure I get it in because the last thing you want to do is make the assumption that you got it and then start drilling down into a, a wall let's say or the floor or whatever and have this not be connected you'll still be able to drill the hole but after you drill it this could pop off and drop doink right down inside your wall okay so so I'm gonna um, double check that and so after see there after I cut this hole I'm gonna take my drill I'm gonna hook my drill on here I'm gonna fish this down there and try to get it into the center of the plate and then try to get this so it's going straight down okay and then once I push it down in the bottom then if I just keep pressure on it then I can reach up here 
grab my drill and start and, and start drilling. Okay? And that's 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 how to use a flexi bit. I, I use flexi bits um, every once in a while. I'll I'll have to do that. I, I I've uh, made some other videos. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I think they're on my channel where um, I took a uh, wall mount air conditioner and where the cord was. Um, I actually put a cutting box in for a four hour timer and I, I actually had to drill through um, a stud inside the wall, fish the wire from one cavity through a stud over to the electrical outlet box. I took the electrical outlet box out, um, fished the wire or drilled the hole through there so you can you can drill holes horizontal with this and and vertical and then I was able to fish the wire in there and then I I installed a new cut-in box where the existing electrical outlet was uh, it's after I ran my wires and then rehooked up the existing and then hooked up the new four-hour timer looked like I was never there it looked like it was like that forever okay so lots of different things that you can do with a flexi bit and you can you can also use a flexi bit like if you have a single gang let's say you have a single gang light switch on the wall here and you want to install a, a ceiling fan or or something okay and let's say right now um, you don't have anything let's say you don't have anything like we we've, we've got a place where there's n there's no outlet for us for a light fixture or a or a ceiling fan or anything we've got a single gang light switch on the wall you turn that on and it activates the bottom of two electrical outlets next to the bed and the, and you can get both lamps to turn on with the light switch well we want to add a um, ceiling fan so we're going to take out the single gang uh, switch box cut in a two gang cut in box and before installing the box uh, put the flexi bit up in there, drill through a fire block, which, which is because the wall is like 10 feet tall, so I know there's going to be a fire block in there, and then extend it up to the two top plates up inside the wall. That's why you, you, you have the extensions, and then just keep pushing it up through there, and then drill the hole, you know, from, from down here all the way up through your top plate, and then go up in the attic, and you'll see where that where that is. Then you can then you can attach this fitting, this end fitting, this thing here because it expands when you push the end, see? And then you can put your, your, uh, wire, your wire in there from the attic, let's say. You've got to roll a wire and then uh, you hook that. You hook that right on the end. You can take, you can, you can uh, take your bit off and you hook that on the end. After this is pushed up, after you drill this up through the, your plates, just leave it up there. You know, prop it up there, have somebody else up there, hold it up there, and then they can put this end on there, and then you put your Romex wire inside this little cavity, and then it grabs on there, and then you can pull it straight down, right down from the attic all the way back down. How cool, how cool would that be? And you have to do something like that, especially if you've got a fire block in your wall. If you didn't have any fire blocks in the wall, you could just run it up through here, drill the hole, and then you, can, you could fish your wire from the top down. Just push it down there, reach up through here, shine your flashlight. Okay, keep pushing, fill in your wall cavity, grab it, pull it out. You can't really do that if there's a fire block in there. That's what this goodie is all about. That's why you want to get that. And this whole this whole set here, right here, you know, not including this one, okay? That was like, uh, oh, I don't know, 75 bucks. I think I got it, I'm not sure if I got it at, at Lowe's or if I got it at the Home Depot. I can't remember. I think it was at Lowe's. Sorry, Home Depot. I just happened to be at Lowe's that time and, and uh, it seemed like a pretty good deal and so I got it. And I'm sure both hardware stores, other box stores would probably have the same type of setup. And, uh, you know, as you can see, I don't use it much. I think I've only used this one uh, one time, as a matter of fact. And it was at our, it was at our house. I had to get underneath the, the floor because we're installing a, uh, 
uh, recliner sectional couch downstairs that was electrified and of course it was right out in the middle of the room and of course there was no electrical in the middle of the room but lucky for me I was able to access underneath the house and so I took an electrical outlet I took it out of the wall carefully and then I drilled the hole all the way through there um, with my flexi bit then I went underneath the house and I fished a wire from this location down over to where the uh, recliner sectional couch was. Uh, installed a cut-in box, cut the carpet out, installed a, uh, installed a uh, box, ran the wire from there over, over to here. And then installed a cut-in box, reinstalled the existing electrical outlet. You can't even tell. You can't even tell. And I'm not even an electrician. But I did all that, and I got that on my channel, uh, how, how to install power for a, a, a couch sectional, or, hey, I don't have power to my couch sectional, what do I do? It's something like that. It's, it's listed under, uh, you can go to my main uh, YouTube channel page, go to um, playlists. Click on playlists, and then scroll down to everything electrical, or electrical know-how or something like that that click on there and every electrical video I've done uh, that I've posted on that particular YouTube channel um, you'll find it it'll be there so see I did that by using this flexi bit and had I not had that flexi bit I would never have been able to do it so there's there's another way to do things but as it is I'm only having to do this little cut-in ring. See, I didn't. I I could have used a cut-in uh, plastic box, but you don't need a cut-in plastic box. It, this is just a ring. This is for telephone or coaxial cable. You use something like that. See, and you cut you cut your hole, and then these flaps these flaps go up behind there. You tighten up the screw after you put it in, and um, it, it works out. It works out pretty good if, if you. If you've never used one of these before, you leave you leave these on the inside like that. Okay, you push that through the hole, and then you tighten that screw. As you tighten the screw to the right, doink, that goes up like that behind the sheetrock. Okay, you got to have it. You got to have it up high enough. See, actually, when you tighten it up, that's slick. When you tighten that up, see that groove. See that groove there. When you tighten that, this goes up like that. First it's down like that, you tighten that. And see that groove? It stops right there. Okay, then as you continue tightening that screw, this pulls in behind the sheetrock. Okay? And then that's how that's how it connects this this bottom one, same way. You tighten it, this happens to go down to the right this time, and it goes down to there. And this one goes up to there. See? That sucks in, that sucks in, and away you go. Okay? So that's, that's how that works. And um, now I'm ready. I'm ready to do my dirty business. And um, I actually took the cover plates off these uh, just to measure from the top of the baseboard up to the electrical uh, junction box on both of those to get the height of that there and then I took just took a little piece of craft paper and put that down there that's gonna catch my sheetrock dust and all that kind of stuff and you know if you don't have any craft paper make sure you vacuum this all up get it in the nooks and crannies and all that kind of good stuff and away you go okay time for me to get busy ah dabbity nabbit can you believe what I told you happened. I told you to make sure to put the drill bit on and make sure it was pushed on there nice and tight so that when you drill the hole down there, it doesn't pop off. Guess what? I don't see the drill bit, do you? And I had it. I had it poked in there and I checked it back and forth and I know I had it in there properly. And I think something just happened. Uh, Somehow, where I got it in there and a little shaving piece of wood, something as I was kind of fiddling with it, 
it must have hit something. It just loosened that up. And when I, I was careful too, man. When I was taking it back out, I was unscrewing it, uh, you know, forward, backward, forward, backward, because there's insulation in the wall too. And when it's like that, you, you've got to do a little bit forward, then backward, then forward, then backward. You do too much, that just starts zipping up around your, your, uh, your drill, especially uh, when you're drilling it and when you're trying to get the bit back out and the rod back out. And somehow, it's... It's down in there. I didn't hear it fall down, you know, all the way. So um, I'm thinking there's another plate in there. And now I can't, I can't do anything. I can't even check it because I don't have the drill bit. I'm going to have to go buy a drill bit and put it on there. Hey, my loss is your gain. I even try to push this down there and it's going down a little bit, but then it's hitting something else. And I think there's another plate down in the wall, this is a tenant separation wall. It could be a fire block or something like that. And most tenant separation walls, this cracked me up too. It's two layers of half inch sheetrock. And most of the time, uh, I've seen a, a wall where it's two layers of five eighths. And uh, it has to be a special type of type X five eighths um, to make it a rated one hour wall or two hour wall separation or something like that. But two layers a half inch I just you know, I, I don't know I, I don't think you get as good of a rating if you don't use five eighths uh, two layers of five eighths but hey two layers of half inch that's all I got in there and so verdict's not in yet on whether or not I can get it down there and I don't think I thought maybe as I pulled it up maybe it got tangled up in the uh, insulation and um, it's down on the it's down on this bottom plate right here but you know I can't I can't reach my arm down there all the way to find it and this is this is the type of things that happen when you're trying to do things on your own but you just kind of learn as you go and you see here you'd think I'd be able to put my hand down and and reach the bottom but you know I just I just can't do it. I just can't reach the bottom. And it, the, the, uh, the drill bit could be sitting on that bottom plate or scrunched up in the insulation as I pulled it up. It could have popped out then, but I don't know. I think it's down below. And the only other thing I could do when I'm at the store getting, getting the, uh, another drill bit, I'm hoping to still find it in, in the wall. I could put a, a double cut in box here and put a double two gang blank plate on there drill a hole through it because they don't have a double see most of them are a single with a hole in there this hole happened to be too big as it was but they have smaller holes but they didn't have it in this type of, of, of uh, cover they had it in vinyl just a little bit smaller hole but either way the coaxial cable is still too big and I thought it would be good to have the coaxial cable uh, folded in there and kind of down tight instead of coming straight out. Then I have to put a kink in it to get it down. You see what I'm saying? And so um, if I put a, a two gang ring in there, then I'll just have to drill a hole out. And I got a, I got a drill bit for that. And I, I, I can do that. Um, then... Um, I can reach my hand down there and dab it and dab it. When I was at the store, I should have just picked one up. I could have always taken it back if I didn't use it. I was hoping I didn't have to use it. I thought, ah, no problem. I can get it with this. I drill it down through there. Bing, bang, boom. Same thing down in the garage. I may, well, I'm hoping to get this uh, down there. So I'm hoping to just have a single box like this where I can reach my hand in there both directions, you know. And, and feel feel for uh, the wire or whatever and and do it that way okay but downstairs down in the garage if I have to worst case scenario if I have to uh, if I need more room I should get a big box at the store for that too okay just in case and if I don't need it I can always take it back